All right. So, first day working on the Audi, trying to figure out the non-starting problem, and I believe it's the starter. Um, at least for now, it's the starter. The battery is pretty low, but um, so I did go ahead and get a new starter. So the old, basically the old one, I I jumped the solenoid to the actual starter. Um, this the solenoid has constant power. Then you also you have a plug in here, and as soon as you hit the ignition, it switches power over, knocks it, knocks the starter out, and then spins. Now I could spin it, the other one manually by hand, but when I took it off and jumped power, nothing. Um, I did it a few times, broke it loose. Uh, it would turn really slowly. Um, I know it's not the proper way to test a starter, but when you hook. I hook a ground right here and hit the actual part to the starter and it'll spin and it'll basically torque it out of your hands. Not quite out of your hands, but you can feel it torque. Um, so I normally do that just to see how strong the starter is. Like this one, tor torque pretty hard. The other one, you can even feel it. You can see it spin, but you can actually feel any torque from it. So, as, And then it also stopped again. I did have... I did have them test it there and it, they said bad, um, even though I already knew that. Always good to double check, so I did go ahead and get a new starter, all nice and pretty. Tested it here, it torqued pretty hard, it spins, so that's a plus. Um, I did not do any, of, well, another reason for the starter, I ran a voltmeter to this part, the constant had battery power ran it to here obviously nothing had it turned over it got power so when I did it with like a wrench I could you could tell it was actually sending power through the tool so I knew the starter was actually getting power but um I didn't actually do any of the removal but I'll show you um, obviously disconnect the battery and the starter is actually pretty easy to get to it goes right here I did not have to take anything out to get to it. Um, that top bolt was a pain, but that bottom bolt right there was pretty easy. I just put a, um, let's see what size it was. It's a, if you can see that, where'd it go? A T50 hex. Um, there's the bolt right there. It came off really easy. Went ahead and took the wire off. There's the other wire going up, and then the plug-in um, has a little safety feet, little red clip in there. Got that out, and that top bolt was a little bit of a pain. Um, you had to go, I had to go through this way to get to get it, and stick my hand through there. Uh, but it really wasn't that bad. It just took a little while to get that bolt off because you can only turn it so far. But other than that, it's one of the easiest starters I say I've done, except obviously like. My Silverado, that thing's easy. I mean, it's like right here, on this, and you take two bolts out, it falls out. Um, just like my S10, it's a little pain, but not too bad. So I did like how easy this one was. Um, I have already turned the flywheel, make sure everything worked, and it did spin freely. Um, I knew it did, but like I said, always good to double check stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this starter put on. It actually slides in very easy. Um, I'm gonna get these two bolts on, and. We'll try and start her up for the first time. Alright, so like I said, you just get the starter. Um, the solenoid will be on the upper part. So, just, like I said, this, the battery is unplugged. It's a little difficult with two ha one hand, but there it goes. And there it is, already most of the way there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts in. One bolt goes this way, one goes to the back side, but it's in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and be right back. Well guys, it was only the starter. It's right. It sounds a little rough, it needs a good tune up, but it was only the starter. That's why they sold it so cheap because it wouldn't start. It's a $130 starter. So, I'm gonna get the truck out of the way, get this thing up on ramps, and take it for a little ride. It definitely needs a tune up, but.
It's running. It's freaking running. So I'm going to move the truck and take this thing for its first ride. Um, and then I'll explain what exactly. I know there's a lot of problems on forums with this, and um, I'll explain that here in just a few. And hopefully this helps someone out. I'll be right back. Alright, so it runs. Um, took it up the road a little bit. Um, but yeah, so pretty much I've read on a few forums some different things. Um, pretty much before I got it, it was driving, then it stopped starting on them. It ran fine, it just stopped starting. They got to start one other time, then the whole time I checked it, it wouldn't start. Um, everything got power. Normally, like, say dead battery, you go to start it, it'll go click, 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 click. Didn't do that. Normally, if it's a starter, it'll just go click, and it can't push anything. Well, it didn't do that. The starter was just completely locked up. Um, so, I got lucky side, even though it's more expensive part. Um, a lot of times, they said it was either the ignition switch, not that key ignition, the starter ignition switch is here. That's the cheaper part is only like $48 out of Riley's, but it you gotta take the whole steering wheel off, stuff like that, and get to it. So price-wise, it was a better option, but work-wise, a lot more in, entailed. Um, the other the other main thing was the mobilizer, which sometimes you have to take to the dealer, but there are ways to um, get it back depending on what happened. If it's in like lock mode, yeah, you gotta take it to the dealer. Um, and get it basically unlocked. Not exactly unlocked, but out of security mode. Um, but if it's just the key immobilizer, you d disconnect the battery, touch them together, drain everything out, leave it off for 15 minutes. Hook the battery back up, put the key in, turn it on, leave it on for 15 minutes, and a lot of times that'll work. If it doesn't, then obviously uh, search other things or the dealer. But luckily mine was just a starter. Um, so it, it's kind of a better deal than the RX-8. Obviously I got the RX-8 to run and everything. I just have to push start it. and um, Actually about the same price I paid for them. But um, that motor needed a lot of work. This one needed a starter and it runs. It's going to need a tune up. Um, do a throttle body clean everything like that. Most oil change. Uh, possibly cool and flush stuff you do when you get a used car I mean common stuff I mean always change the oil um, coolant coolant's good it wasn't overheating so um, I'll probably leave that for now I checked the levels and everything it was fine but other than that I mean it's got 105,000 miles so it's gonna need a tune-up um, might as well go ahead and do plugs coils little things like that um, air filter cabin filter I said just normal stuff you do when you first buy a used car but um as for that everything works it drove obviously it's not the quickest Audi you can get it's an A4 not an S4 anything like that but there's always room for improvement um, bigger turbo built motor stuff like that um, and this car is paid for so I can start messing with it when I had the speed Mazda Speed 3 um, I did a lot to it but it wasn't paid for so there's always out chance that you get rid of it um, obviously you can get rid of this too but uh, that's why I don't like doing too much to the SRT 10 because it's not paid for yet I'm still paying on it so obviously don't plan on losing my job but um, economy changes things happen I could always lose my job I lose the truck I lose all the money I put into it and everything for that truck is expensive so I think this is gonna be my um, little car to play around with um, Probably won't get it at, to the power the Speed 3 was, but you never know. I mean, this is a very, very small turbo. We're talking about maybe five, six pounds of boost, I think, I read. So, um, I'm obviously going to up that. <laughs> but, little mods here and there. Um, if you want to make videos and all that. So, I I'm looking forward to this little car. I've always wanted an Audi. always wanted all-wheel drive. And, like I said, since I got rid of the Speed 3, I've been wanting the, the turbo vehicle the SRT 10 that turbo kit's very expensive there's no way I can afford that anytime soon 
the RX-8, I can, I plan on turboing probably eventually, but I gotta do the LS swap first. Um, I'm not gonna turbo the rotary motor because it, a lot of tuning is involved with that, and it's down here. It's hard to get tuner. You gotta do the online stuff, so it's just not ideal for me right now. Um, I'd rather the LS still get a lot more power than the RX-8 has factory, still good you get that v8 sound even though the rotor sounds pretty good but this i think i'm gonna enjoy this it's gonna be a good daily driver um i'll probably keep the clips for a while i'm still gonna do the five speed swap in it but after i get her jeep done this could be my little toy i'll start doing more stuff to it um even though it's audi it's it is an a4 not an s4 so things are still pricey being audi but being the a4 not the s4 things aren't horribly priced um i said i looked up a turbo kit already and they make a nice upgraded turbo kit um a little bigger than the ko4 that was on the mazda it's like two grand yeah i think like two grand which is a lot but the turbo kit for the srt 10 is like 12 grand without any upgrades so um maybe just get a smaller bolt on one for now, play around with it, front mount, cold air intake, um, not cold air intake, short ram intake, my bad, inlet pipe, down pipe, stuff like that. Well, I hope you guys look forward to this build, um, I know I've been planning on doing the RX-8 build for a while, it just got away from me because the kit and stuff's expensive, to have, a, to have a wiring harness made and the computer tuned for it, so it, it gets pricey, and it's more of a laid back um, build this is going to be a little more fun I can do bolt ons and still drive it every day that as soon as I start doing stuff to it it's going to be decommissioned for a while so this I can do turbo inlet pipe drive it the next day down pipe drive it the next day air box drive it the next day stuff like that um, front mount in cooler I mean stuff like that won't take very long but I'm very happy with this car so far um, and I hope to have a lot more fun with it so Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope this helps someone. Hope someone out there is interested in the build. Um, if so, please subscribe. Help me out. Hit that like button and I guess that notification button too. There's a lot of stuff you gotta click nowadays. Um, but have a good one.